Hello once again, my name is Jeff from CMAC and today we'll be going over the ATEM software control. If you haven't already, check out our previous tutorial where we go over the ATEM Mini hardware. The physical ATEM Mini is only half of the entire equation. If you want to get more functionality out of the Mini, you'll need to use the ATEM software control. This will allow you to control the ATEM via software, but also customize some crucial settings. To start, you'll need to actually download the software from Blackmagic's website. Go to blackmagicdesign.com, click on the Support tab, select ATEM Live Production Switchers. Now, although it may look like nothing has changed, scroll down to Latest Downloads. At the top, you should see something that says ATEM Switchers X.X Update. Go ahead and download this for your system. Upon clicking your desired system, you will be prompted with this screen that asks you to register your ATEM. If you are using your own ATEM Mini, fill in the information and click Register and Download. If you are using a Mini that you checked out from CMAC or one that you simply do not own, click Download Only on the bottom left. You'll see that there are two programs that downloaded, the ATEM Setup and ATEM Software Control. Let's start with the ATEM Setup application. Make sure that your ATEM Mini is connected to your computer. Once opened, you should see the ATEM model that you're using. Go ahead and click this little circle icon on the left. Here we have some useful settings that I recommend changing to your preferences. First off, we have our network settings. This would be used to control the ATEM remotely, but we'll go ahead and leave this alone for now. Scrolling down a bit, we have our panel settings. Switching mode basically determines what happens when you press one of the source buttons on the ATEM. By default, it'll be set to cut bus, which means when you press a button, it will cut to that source instantly. If you select program preview, pressing a button will send it to preview rather than cutting to it. This just comes down to personal preference. These picture in picture and chroma keyer settings are pretty self-explanatory. By default, these effects will drop after you transition to another source, however you can choose to keep them on screen instead. Again, this just comes down to personal preference and what the show requires. Once your settings are locked in, don't forget to hit save at the bottom. Now let's open up the software control. You can actually open it up from the ATEM setup application by clicking this icon right here. When launching the software for the first time, you'll be prompted to choose your transition control method. The program preview method is designed for modern switchers where you have a designated preview row and program row. A slash B direct is an older style of switching where the buttons stay lit in their positions rather than changing rows. I recommend sticking with program preview unless you're already familiar with and prefer A slash B direct. Once you choose your transition method, another prompt will appear. Choose connection method manual IP address. The IP address should already be entered. Now click connect. Now that we're in the software, you can go ahead and click the cog wheel on the bottom left to change some of the settings. Under General, we can set the resolution and frame rate. Under Audio, we can do things like change our audio channels, how audio transitions, and set inputs to line or mic. On the Pro version, you can use the Multiview tab to adjust some multiviewer settings. The Labels tab allows us to change how things are labeled within the software control. This could be useful if you're used to different terminology or want to be specific with what is on each source. And lastly, we have the Hyperdeck and Remote tabs for more advanced setups. With that taken care of, we can change more settings by going up to the top. The Files tab allows you to edit the connection and transition settings that you selected when first launching the software. Macros allow you to create pre-recorded commands that perform multiple actions with one button press. Finally, Output allows you to change what the HDMI output displays. This could be anything from a specific source to preview, program, etc. If you're using the Pro version, this is where you'll select Multiviewer if you want to use that. Now that all of our settings are in order, we can take a look at everything the software control has to offer. First we have our Program and Preview buttons. These reflect what is already on the physical ATEM board. So for instance, if we put source number 3 on Program, it will reflect that on the board as well. Here we have colors 1 and 2. We can choose what colors display by clicking the color generators under the palettes tab on the right side. This bars button will display colored bars on screen. Finally we have MP1. This will play whatever you have selected in your media player. You can add items to the media player in the media tab at the bottom. Simply search for your file and drag it into the slot. Back on the main switcher page, navigate to the media player tab next to palettes. From here, you can use the drop-down menu to select your desired media. 
Next, we move on to the next transition section. This could get a little complicated, so bear with me. BKGD, or background, essentially means whatever source is on program. When selected, your source, which is technically your background, will transition when you press cut or auto. The on air button is placed directly over the key one button to indicate that they are related. When selected, your upstream key, otherwise known as key one, will appear on screen. When key one is selected, that means that your upstream key will transition when you press cut or auto. You can select your upstream key by navigating to upstream key one under palettes. From here, you can choose luma, chroma, pattern, or DVE. Luma can be used to mix sources together for interesting effects. It can also be used to simply display an image from the media player. A good example would be like a banner or logo that stays on screen throughout the broadcast. Chroma is used for keying a green screen. Pattern can be used for interesting split screen effects. DVE is basically used for picture in picture. It displays a source on top of your current source. Moving back to the next transition buttons, let's go over a few scenarios. If both background and key one are selected, then the upstream key will go on air or off air when you transition. If key one is selected but background is not, then only the upstream key will transition when you hit a transition button. The source, or camera angle, will not transition. If background is selected but key one is not, then your sources will transition as normal. Here are some applicable examples. While operating the ATEM like normal, the on air button under next transition will be off. When I want to switch from source to source, like normal, only background is selected, meaning that my camera angles are the only things affected when transitioning. Key 1 is off. If I want to fade my upstream key on screen, but remain on the camera that I'm on, I would select key 1 and turn the background off. Then, I simply hit the auto button for my transition. At this point, my upstream key will fade on screen, while my camera angle remains the same. Now, while my upstream key is on air, let's say I want to change camera angles but keep my key on screen. I would select background and turn off key 1. That means that when I transition, it's only going to switch my camera angle, background, not my key. Finally, if I want to transition to another camera angle and I want my upstream key to transition off screen with it, I would make sure that both background and key 1 are selected. Then, when I transition, it will fade out my current camera angle and my key. Moving on, let's go to the transition style section. From here, you can select which style of transition plays when you press the auto button. Mix will simply fade between sources. Dip will fade to a selected color before fading to the next source. Wipe will use the selected wipe transition. And finally, DVE will use a selected push or slide transition. You can adjust each transition type by navigating to the transitions menu under palettes. This preview transition button will allow you to, well, preview a transition. When selected, hitting a transition button will only show the transition in a preview window. Let's move on to the DSK or downstream key section. The tie button syncs the DSK with a transition. It ties them together. When selected, your DSK will appear and disappear with your transition. Rate changes the speed at which your DSK will appear on screen. The on air button will immediately display your DSK on screen. Auto will fade your DSK on screen. The speed of the fade is determined by the rate. To select your DSK, navigate to the downstream key menu under palettes. To play something from the media player, like a lower third, simply make sure that fill source is set to media player 1 and key source is set to media player 1 key. This may be set by default. We can use this big fader bar to manually control transitions. On the Pro version, we can navigate to the Output tab to control our live stream and recording settings. You can choose between Facebook, Twitch, or YouTube. You can manually add sources by editing the XML file, but we'll leave that alone for now. You can leave Server as Primary. Now, enter your stream key. We have a separate tutorial on how to find your stream key from some of the major live streaming platforms. Adjust your streaming quality under the Quality menu. Keep in mind that higher quality live streaming requires stronger internet. When you're ready to stream, hit the on air button. Down here, you can start the recording by clicking the recording button. It's important to note that your recording quality matches your live streaming quality. So if you're live streaming in 1080p, your recording will also be at 1080p. Finally, you can fine tune your audio settings by clicking the audio tab at the bottom. Here, you can adjust your gain, volume, equalization, and much, much more. 
This is an extremely powerful tool that I recommend poking around in if you need to improve your audio. That concludes this basic tutorial and walk around of the ATEM software control. With this, and the help of our previous ATEM tutorial, you have the knowledge to host live streams and recordings of any size. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to hit record. If you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out our playlist of other tutorials. You can stay up to date on all things CMAC by following us on social media. Learn how you can become a member with access to equipment, editing tools, and other resources by going to cmac.tv.